Fam, what's up? Kyle Henderson, Bama Football on YouTube, here at the Mercedes Stadium, where Alabama has defeated the Georgia Bulldogs 27 to 24. In a game that Alabama had so much at stake, this team once again showed that resiliency, showed four quarters of play, and made a statement to the rest of the world of college football. This team is still here. This team is still at the top of the college football mountain. This is the number one team in college football. Go back and watch previous videos that I've uploaded. As soon as they started to unleash Jalen Milrow, this team is not going to lose another football game. I've said it, I said that weeks ago. There's a lot of people that continue to doubt this team going into this game, going into different games throughout the season, and Alabama continued to prove the naysayers wrong. When you look to this game and how it went down, I thought it was a game, of course, of momentum. Uh, Kirby Smart said that it was going to be a game of momentum. Things that stood out to me, I think the play that former Georgia Bulldog players made plays here, right? You had Jermaine Burton catching the touchdown pass. You had Trez Marshall recovering a fumble. These guys are now Alabama players, and these guys will be remembered for what they did in this game as Alabama players. But I think that these are two of the top teams in college football, absolutely. I think we honestly watched the national championship game today. I think these are the two best teams in college football. We've seen it before. Um, these two teams have the best resumes in college football. Check this out. Alabama is now 4-1 and one against top 25 teams. Alabama just beat the number one team in college football. They were a six and a half point underdog in this game. They won that game. Nick Saban undefeated here. There's a reason why this place is called Bryant-Denny East. Alabama knows how to play in big time games. These players are no more, no longer sophomoric. They have grown up, they are juniors, they are hungry. Talk to Isaiah Bond after the game, job's not finished. This isn't the ultimate job. This was just one of the staples along their pinnacle to the top, right? Had to win the SEC West, had to win the SEC title, and now absolutely having a shot in the college football playoffs. This team has really had a remarkable story. The fight that they've had and the growth that they've shown from week two has been monumental. I look at the play of Jalen Milrow today. Wasn't the strongest performance overall statistically, but I think when push came to shove, he came up and he made some really big plays for this team. I like the way how they utilized him in the back end of this game, letting him run the football. And Georgia, they did a great job stopping the deep ball. Georgia's defense is elite. Georgia's offense, um, they were shut down by Alabama. Alabama had a really good game plan. Uh, and I think that Alabama defense, once again, has continued to be the catalyst to why this team continues to win these type of games. Alabama's overall defense uh, in the secondary, I thought played really well. There was a couple times where, man, they were just this close to getting an interception or two. Uh, Kool-Aid had one close to the end zone. I thought uh, maybe, I think it was Christian Story as well. Um, but these guys played great, and I like the fact that they were able to get pressure on Carson Beck. They made him uncomfortable. Coming into this game, Georgia's quarterback had only been sacked, I believe, 10 times. So getting heat on him was certainly uh, important, and that was a major component in this game. Uh, Alabama played mistake-free football for the most part, and I thought it was Georgia who made the, the mistakes, right? You had the fumble. You had the missed field goal. Uh, those things add up in a game like this, a game of this magnitude. So where do we go from here? Well, go to the college football playoffs. Um, as of right now, without even seeing the Florida State outcome, I have it Alabama um, in the playoffs, number one. But I have it number one, I think the committee is gonna go with Michigan. I think they will then go with number two, Washington, being that Washington is an undefeated Pac-12 champ. And I think they will put number three, Texas, uh, in at that number three spot because they have the head-to-head -head against Bama. Um, an undefeated Florida State team or um, you know whatever the case is Florida State I just don't think that they have the resume over a team like Alabama considering that they just beat the number one team in the college football playoff rankings um, I want to get your take inside the comment box and of course we will talk about it on Sunday um, so what does that do and where does Alabama go if it was to shake out like that well Michigan has the opportunity to play number four what it would be Alabama um, in either Pasadena or in the Big Easy at the Sugar Bowl um, and I think Michigan doesn't want Alabama driving to the Sugar Bowl, so you gotta look at Alabama and Michigan potentially uh, in Pasadena. Never been to the Rose Bowl, I think it'd be cool to go back out to LA. 
Um, other matchups would be Washington and Texas. So look, long story short, it's a one game season and it's been like that for quite some time for Alabama. But going forward, um, Alabama and Texas have a, have a really good shot to potentially have a rematch and wouldn't that be something um, but that's getting ahead of ourselves today. This was a remarkable game. These guys killed it. Check this out. Sorry, I had to cut that because I just saw uh, Jalen Milrow, uh, you know, catching up with his family post game. Remarkable, honestly. I mean, the emotion that they must be having right now as a family. Let's check this out. That's them back there. You imagine how proud they are of that young man. And the story that he has had this season is something so special. Um, that's a great moment with the family, honestly. When you look to storylines of the college football season overall, he's not gonna win the Heisman this year. His story is not over. His story is just getting started. To all the naysayers out there that don't believe in him, you're wrong. He's continued to win football games. He's continued to mature as a quarterback. It's just a remarkable story for that young man. I'm really happy for him and his family. And you should be proud of him too if you're an Alabama football fan. Um, overall, this is a great win. Uh, this team's special. It's been a, a, an amazing season. I've been here before. I've seen some big games. I've seen a national title here. Um, I've seen uh, another Jalen, Will of Alabama, back in the second half. Uh, this is different. And the story of this team is not over. So. Um, job's not finished. I'm excited to see where this team goes. Uh, not only in the playoffs, but I think past that. Nick Saban, certainly coach of the year, coach of the eternity, right? For what he continues to do and how he continues to roll with this team. Um, he's the GOAT, for sure. Proved it tonight. There's a lot of people saying that Kirby Smart was the better coach. He's a great coach. What he's done has been amazing. But Nick Saban is uh, the absolute man. Kyle Henderson, Bama Football on YouTube. I appreciate you guys more than you know. Coming to you from the Mercedes Stadium and the ATL. Until next time, I'll catch you soon. Like, subscribe, and we ain't done with this football season yet.